Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, welcome to this uh, new appointment with the light of life. And today we celebrate a great feast in the church, the feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother, Holy Mary. And uh, so let us begin by asking really for her intercession for all of us. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give you thanks, Father, of the universe for giving us a mother, Mary, the most blessed among all creatures. Through her intercession, we ask you that we might be one day where she is already in body and soul. Help us to have the same humble heart that she has and to love you with all our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for, is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, he has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich way away empty. He has held his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to their home, to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. It is a beautiful feast, brothers and sisters. The feast in which the church celebrates the assumption of Mary in heaven. Our tradition says that Mary whether she died or not, this is the church doesn't say if she, if she actually died or if she fell asleep. But the sure thing is that she was brought up into heaven with her body and her soul so that her body did not see any corruption. So she is in heaven as she was here on earth, like you and me with her body, human body. In fact, in heaven there are only two human bodies. One is Jesus's and the other one is Mary's. But the sign and the importance of this feast is not just for Mary, it's for us. Because what she is now, what she has been given as a privilege for being the first, let's say, the most blessed of all creatures, we also receive in hope. And one day we'll all be together in our body and soul as humans, as human beings, not like angels, as human beings in heaven with her and her son. Why is this feast so beautiful? Why is it so important? The best description is really the one we heard in the gospel. It is the one that comes from the very heart of Mary 
this song of exaltation and blessing and thanksgiving that she uh, expresses to the Lord after she goes and visits her cousin Elizabeth and Elizabeth prompted by the Holy Spirit recognizing in her more than she actually uh, want more than what appears that is that she is the mother of the Lord and she cannot know that but the Holy Spirit tells her and Mary exalts her spirit is so full of joy at the wonders that God has done with their poor lowly creature a young a Jewish girl of probably 14 15 years old or something like that from a coming from a place in that was not considered important like Nazareth coming from a normal family from a poor family just one human being among many like many and yet chosen by God for the most important mission of all history and so the heart of Mary sings with exultation in this great prayer and hymn which is the Magnificat which the church also repeats every single evening in the evening prayer in the Vespers and this tells us that God has lifted up the lowly that God has looked with, looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant in fact the real meaning the great meaning of this feast brothers and sisters is that it really represents Mary and the fact that she's in heaven and brought there as queen of the universe as a just human beings like me and you tells us everything about how little we are and how great we are because Mary is both the most humble creature ever lived on earth and the greatest one how can we put together the two because it's all about God brothers and sisters because God is infinite is infinite so every creature for him is basically the same because the, even if you know a little bit of math the difference between an infinite being and a finite being is always infinite no matter how big is the finite being like us limited creatures no matter how big we are the difference between us and God who is infinite is always infinite no matter what so God does not cannot have preferences among his creatures we are all very 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 small for him and yet the greatness of his love is manifested especially in the fact that he takes the Lord the small one and makes it great the greatest act of love is to take someone who is very small and making great by making it share in his own nature and in many this happens at the highest possible level so that she recognizes through this song through this hymn that she is nothing in front of God and because she's nothing <coughs> I'm sorry and be <coughs> because she accepts this she acknowledges this that everything great is worth in her comes from God and she really believed believes this with all her heart and all her being because of that she is so great is in the measure in which we are small and we acknowledge and recognize our smallness that we become great that's the beauty of love why because real love brothers and sisters is an undeserved love love that is undeserved exists makes us great we all look for deserved love we want to be loved and esteemed and recognized for who we are for what we have done for everything we have achieved we want everything depending on us but this is a slavery because when we are depending on our own greatness to achieve and receive what we get brothers and sisters it's difficult sooner or later it will go because we know very well that our greatness is limited it cannot last if we're full of defects we're full of limitations that's why even people who are very rich and very famous in the end they don't don't think that they live a great life they are always really worried about losing what they have and they will do and when they do it when it happens think something about those great people actors or artists when they lose success they are destroyed because that what they wanted that love and and respect that they were looking for depended on them and of course 
sooner or later he goes. But when the poor creature like Mary acknowledges that her greatness comes from God and that the love of God being undeserved, being unconditional will never, never end because it doesn't depend on her, it depends on him, it's there that she becomes the great, the greatest creature. Think about that, this love story, which is really the love story between God the Creator and this little creature which is Mary, which repre who represents all of us, is the love story between God and humanity, in which God, who is the Creator, goes to the little creature in love and asks the little creature for a yes. Think about like a, like any, you know, any man who, in, who is in love with a woman and goes and asks for her yes when he wants to marry her and you know that the woman is free to say yes to say no and in that moment the man is totally dependent on that yes that will bring so much joy but also it's possible to get a no God who could do everything on his own puts himself in the position of the small one going and begging for that yes to that woman a little girl and she says yes and she says yes let it be done according to your will and that yes humble not pretentious without even understanding what was going on really but fills her with so much greatness and she can rejoice for all of us brothers the really what's the secret of life the secret of joy if you want if you want to summarize it in a very small way, little way, is to know, to come to touch deeply the unconditional, undeserved love that God has for you and for me. You don't have to gain it. You don't have to confirm it. You don't have to increase it. You don't have to do really anything to, because that love will go and be with you forever. You need only to say yes, like me and you. Yes, every day. Yes, Lord. Let it be done according to your will. Brother, let, let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for the immense gift of your mother. And we ask that through her we may come to know and accept who we are and who you are. We pray also through her intercession not only for us but for all humanity especially for those who are really suffering and they are lonely and they don't believe in this love and they never feel this love you that you may really touch their heart and bring them to the sublimity of the joy that is found in your son Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen